Thank you, Mr. President. I I commend my colleague for talking about dark money. I, I was so curious this week when I saw, I think it was a New York Times article, about the amount of dark money that came from the Democratic side of the aisle this year, far outpacing anything uh, that Republicans had spent. So I hope he is going to be successful in dealing with some of uh, his supporters on that side of the aisle. But Mr. President, what I want to focus on today is a meeting that I had the opportunity to have last week with the Tennessee Association of Police Chiefs and yesterday with Tennessee sheriffs who had come up. And you know, one of the things that they talked about repeatedly in these meetings is the recent crime spike this is something on everybody's mind, and for good reason. The majority of America's 40 most populous cities saw an increase in homicides last year. 40 most populous increase homicides. More officers were intentionally killed on the job than in any other year since the September 11, 2001 terrorist attacks. This is why morale is low. Shoplifting is surging and the thieves are getting creative. Instead of stuffing merchandise in their clothing and smuggling it out the door, gangs of thieves are executing smash and grab raids. We're also seeing a spike in drug use. Overdose deaths up 30% in 2020. This is not trivial, it's not frivolous, it is not a laughing matter, and it is something that you cannot just overlook. It is life. And I'm sorry to say that Tennessee hasn't escaped this terrible trend. In 2021, the homicide spike in Memphis set a new record. We lost more than 3,000 Tennesseans to drug overdoses in 2020. Mr. President, law enforcement officers take this personally because they see how quickly crime can destroy a community. Are they worried? Yes. Do they have reason to be worried? Absolutely. As I said, morale is low. Recruiting is hard. But here is what struck me about my conversation with the police chiefs and the sheriffs. They don't only consider the local effects. They really see the big picture and the issue writ large for what it truly is. You won't be surprised to know that the lack of security along our southern border came up more than once in these conversations. The chiefs, the officers, see the ripple effects of the Biden administration's absolutely demoralizing failure to enforce the law. On his first day in the White House, President Biden endorsed lawlessness when he made it harder for Border Patrol to secure the country. That stroke of a pen caused absolute chaos on our southern border. Border Patrol detained more than 1.7 million migrants between January and September of 21. 1 1.1 million of those people were single adults. They were not families. And those 1.7 million were just the ones we were able to catch. We'll never know how many hundreds of thousands of gotaways made it into the interior of the country, nor do we know what they were bringing in with them, that they were trying to evade the Border Patrol. People and drugs are flowing across the border. Just last week, I came here to the floor and told the story of the Border Patrol's $7 million week. Between January 1st and January 28th, Mr. President, one week, they seized 47 pounds of meth, 3,800 pounds of marijuana, and almost 20 pounds of cocaine one week. 
Hopefully those drug mules are behind bars, but remember, those are just the drug mules that we caught. We do not know what the gotaways were bringing in with them or how many drug mules there were or how many hundreds of women they were trafficking in for sex trafficking, for human trafficking, for gangs, for labor crews. We don't know. But my Democratic colleagues continue to spin the border crisis as a purely humanitarian issue. But what we are seeing along our southern border is law-breaking. In many cases, it's dangerous criminal behavior, and the Biden administration is ignoring every bit of it. Don't believe what you see. Don't believe the Border Patrol. Don't believe the people that are down there running videos. Oh, no, everything is fine. Just listen to them. But you know who does not believe this, Mr. President? Our law enforcement officers. They don't believe what this is, administration is saying because they see something different. Every town's a border town. Every state is a border state because of that open southern border. Our law enforcement officers can't ignore this. They can't ignore the ripple effects because they live it every single day. They put on the belt, the badge, they go out, they do their job. They see how the Democrats desire to ignore lawless behavior when it benefits their narrative has created a perfect storm of violence, of fear, and has empowered criminals. Not quite the message you want to send if you believe in the rule of law. Just yesterday, I had to send a letter to Health and Human Services demanding to know why taxpayer dollars are funding fresh crack pipes for drug addicts. That's right. An HHS spokesman has confirmed that the agency is pushing a grant program that would fund so-called smoking kits with pipes for users to smoke crystal meth, crack cocaine, and I quote, any illicit substances. Government-funded drug paraphernalia. You know, every once in a while you think you've heard it all. Meanwhile, the border sits wide open, crime is on the rise, and we're asking police departments to do more with less. A recent survey showed that between April 2020 and 21, police force retirements were up 45%. Resignations were up 18% compared to the previous year. There's no coincidence there. It's time for the administration to decide whose side they're on. And they are on the side. Are they on the side of the American people? Are they on the side of law enforcement? Are they on the side of criminals and monsters that really are responsible for this terrible crime spike? I yield the floor.